Hey guys, Conquer here, and welcome to Art of Bar. Today, I want to talk about win variance and diversifying economy. There is a lot of debate in the community between wind versus solars versus e-stores. So, in order to help investigate this argument, I decided to make a wind simulator. The wind simulator uses the same exact implementation in the recoil engine, but it's translated to Python, because who can read that Lua shit? So, how does wind actually work in-game? Well, it's represented by a 2D vector, and the length of the vector represents the current strength of the wind. Every 15 seconds, this vector is updated, and the current wind strength smoothly transitions to the new wind strength over 15 seconds. So now that we know how wind behaves, how do we expect wind levels to be distributed? In my mind, it would look something like a bell curve spending most of its time around the average wind speed, but in reality, it's the complete opposite and looks like this. This graph represents a 20,000 hour simulation time for the wind range 0 to 16. As you can see, it spends a vast majority of the time ticks at the max. This graph helps illustrate how wind is much more volatile and swingy than it appears at first glance. Next, I wanted to calculate the amount of e-storage you need to survive an e-stall. First step is to define what an e-stall actually is respective to wind levels. I define an e-stall period as any segment of time wind spent below the average. Then I calculated the total amount of wind loss in an e-stall period. For example, if wind average is 12, then any time it's spent below 12 is an e-stall period. If wind drops to 6 for 4 seconds, then this would be the equivalent to wind being average for 2 seconds and off for 2, with a total wind loss of 24. I made an array of all wind loss during e-stall periods divided by average wind to calculate the equivalent time of wind being turned off. Here's the resulting graph with total wind disabled time on the y-axis and e-stall percentile in the x-axis. As you can see, the e-storage time required to survive the rarer, higher percentile e-stall periods scales exponentially, with preventing 60% of e-stalls requiring around 15 seconds of e-storage. So if you were consuming 1000 e a second, you would need around 15k energy stored or two e-stores to survive 60% of e-stalls. For 90%, you'll need around 50 seconds of storage, or around 1,000 energy a second expenditure, you'll need around 7 e-stores. Now I want to calculate the average e-storage time required to prevent 90% of e-stalls for a variety of wind ranges. Where did I get 90% you may ask? Well, I got it straight from my ass. I have no idea what percentile of e-stalls is best to mitigate. I just chose a reasonably high number for reliable energy stability. I created this heat map here to represent the required e-storage time to prevent 90% of e-stalls. On the y-axis is min wind and on the x-axis is max wind. The heat colors represent the amount of e-storage time required. As expected, as wind variance between min and max increases, more storage is required, with the largest range capping out at around a high 40 seconds. An interesting one to look at is the 4 to 12 range. This is a very common range for many maps, which still requires 20 plus seconds of e-storage time despite the wind being fairly low to begin with. Um, once again, this is e-storage time, which is the amount of time you have to support your continual energy expenditure before hitting zero. A lot of these graphs are very theoretical calculations, so now I want to do some actual in-depth simulations. I created a simple brute force simulator to compute all the combinations of wind, a solar, and e-stores to maintain net positive energy within a certain threshold. The simulator has a constant 1000 e drain a second and simulates the income of each combination of wind and a solar over time. The total energy it can produce is capped by the amount of e-stores and the energy can go negative to simulate metal piling up that needs to be spent. The simulation has to be net energy positive for at least a, thir a certain percentage of time or else that combination of buildings is disqualified. For my tests, I was doing it at a minimum of 90%, uh, otherwise it would get disqualified. At the end of the simulations, those that passed have their building's metal costs summed up, including e-cost converted to metal, and the cheapest solution is chosen. Here are the results of the combination simulator for a variety of common wind ranges. First we have 4 to 12 wind, which is a range for popular maps such as Flats and Force, Kings of Salt, and Star Watcher. And seemingly a solar has come out on top pretty hard. Next we have 2 to 14 wind, which is representative of maps like Hades Pond. It's higher wind average than the previous, but also more volatile. 
and as you can see, even with the higher wind, it appears A solars are still dominant. 90% E positive time is a high bar to hold, apparently. And lastly, we have a very interesting one, 0 to 16. This represents everyone's favorite map, Glitters. The high wind max provides a big incentive to go wind, but also has a massive downside of potentially dropping to zero, which vice versa favors A solars. I was quite surprised to see that A solars were the dominant viable method to maintain 90% E positive time. Apparently, nothing can beat the raw consistency of A solars when held up to a 90% minimum. On the bottom is the cheapest pure wind solution with 6 E stores. This solution costs about 500 metal more, but its total energy output is definitely higher, which I'll talk about later. Due to the prevalence of A solars, I decided to rerun the tests but drop the E positive time threshold to 80%. Here are the results for the reruns. Flats and Hades remain the same as wind seems to just be objectively bad on them. I was kind of expecting Hades to favor wind at 80% threshold, but it's just too low value I guess. Glitters on the other hand gave two very interesting answers. The first solution heavily favored mass wind with a few E stores, and the second solution gave a hybrid between half wind and half A solars for less overall output, but more stability. The second answer is very cool to see despite being less favorable than the mass wind, as it demonstrates the viability of hybrid energy solutions. So what are the takeaways we can get from all of these numbers and graphs? Well, number one is if you're not making E stores, you should start making them. And if you are making them, make more. I think a lot of us think of E stores as like a static cost you pay at the start of the game, but really it's something that should be scaled linearly alongside with your energy production. Number two is diversifying your economy is an acceptable strat. Even on very high wind maps like glitters, if there's a lot of volatility, a legitimate argument can be made to mix in even just a few A solars to smooth out bumps. And number three, on maps with lower wind ranges, it just seems like A solars are objectively better. Now I want to address some of the prevalent issues with my tests. Number one, uh, I'm not a math guy and my code slash analysis could be shit. So feel free to correct me in the comments and do your own testing. The GitHub link is in the description. Number two, I don't account for e-conversion, which is a big draw of wind farms. I'm not sure how to include that in the calculations as it seems kind of convoluted. But if you did, it would definitely be a big buff to wind. And number three, I had to reduce the simulation time for the brute force calculator since some tests were taking like a full day. I was too lazy to optimize, but each test ran for the equivalent around like 60 in-game hours, so I think it's good enough. And that's all I got guys, thanks for watching, and if somebody flames you for making A-Solars on a wind map, don't mention my name.